Hi, everyone. Today I thought I would talk about Testament matchups, and I thought, since there's not a ton of information about Testament, or their, their matchups, really, uh, I thought I'd format it in a way that's very direct, very fast, and just kind of gets you the info you need without taking, you know, forever. You know, it just gets you right in there and, like, helps you just kind of pick up the character and play each matchup, or if you struggled against the character, you could just kind of, you know, click on the the fancy little thing where it takes you to the characters. I don't know what that's called, but it's very cool. I like it a lot on, on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, but basically, it just gets you into the either matchup that you want and just like learn from there, right? That's really the goal. So, Sol. 2k is extremely strong and it can avoid success as well as Faras or, you know, outright beat either of them. Same with 6p, which is, you know, very important. Uh, 2s is something he has to do in, in response to this, which is quite weak against Testament's other moves, right? It basically ena enables them to be way better in the mid-range and just bully from there. Remember though that most of his return comes from counter hits or hits with meter. And so pressing a lot of buttons on him in neutral, like, you know, going fucking crazy, it's not very good. So be very careful until you get stained. Then when you get stained, that's when, you know, a lot of these hits really, really matter. That's when, you know, you get your combos and whatever. If you're trying to control space, uh, rely on 2k until he starts showing 2s, and then you play around that with far s. So that's the basic approach to use soul. So Kai, so the big thing to be mindful of is Stun Dipper and Fireball. Both of these options, not just Charge Fireball, but regular Fireball. Both of these options can kill, like essentially bully you for, you know, doing Crow into them or overusing 236x. Although you can use two, the first hit of 236x to kill the projectile uh, when it comes out. So this is very important. Uh, again, be very careful about how you use Crow after 236s as he can react with Stun Dipper and punish you. In fact, he can punish a lot with Stun Dipper RC after a lot of pressure strength. So be very mindful of that. Outside of that, though, it is basically just a, you know, a neutral and Flitzy's base matchup. You can force him to move preemptively with Arbiter if he's not moving, or you punish full screen charge edge, uh, ch charge stun edge with uh, Arbiter as well. 2H is also very strong in this matchup bid screen because most of his return without uh, or off with punishes without meter is pretty minimal and doesn't really lead to much. And 2H is quite hard to punish on reaction with his big buttons without specifically looking for it. Around the start, 5k is great, and it'll go over most of his lows, which he needs to beat uh, 2k. So 2k and 5k are the goals. So May. May doesn't really have many good options to start offense on Testament without taking risks outside of round start. Round start is the exception, we'll get to that in a second. But she can kill you if she gets in, obviously, as everyone is very familiar. Uh, try to keep space between you two, you know, keep looping Sane with Arbiter, you know, 236s, Crow, like, keep doing this as much as you can to kind of keep your meter high. That's really the, the thing you want to aim for most. Uh, be a little careful about over committing to this cycle though because she needs the air very well and uh, that's very bad if she ends up getting it on you. Uh, May 5k at round start is very strong and beats pretty much everything you do except for 6p but doing nothing will give you a whiff punish so keep that in mind. Chip! Distance is incredibly important for him. S or, sorry, for you. So get stained before he gets in on you and that's basically the, the, big, the big thing. 6p is very good against him if he's jumping a lot. Jump D is very good as well. And uh, be very careful about using big normals like 6h, 2h, because they are very slow and he is very fast. Moves like Faras, 5k, uh, 6p, Jump D, they're all very, very good to be using. And using 2p, 2 and 4p uh, Crow, Preemptively is pretty good if he uses the air a lot. Uh, but in general, you want to avoid using big options and try to stick to being a little as safe as possible. Air 236S can be really useful to help set up stain, but in general, the matchup is basically played on the ground and playing as safe as you can with your normals. At least Testament has some very good normals, so stick to using them. Uh, try to preserve your meter when you do sting him so that you can go into Nostrovia and start offense on him when you do have him sting. Or you can hit him from it too. So Milia. Milia is basically around letting her move and punishing her for over committing with movement. A very common one is IAD Jump H or IAD Capel. In both cases, you can cover both options with 2K. 
can cover both options uh, pretty well. You can 2k on reaction to your air dash and crouch under immediate jump H and Capel, and it even lets you punish Capel's landing recovery. Our ways around this are pretty limited, and even then, they still just lose to you just doing, you know, 6p. Uh, when she's moving around a lot in the air, jumping up to meet her with jump D to meet her is very, very good, and it gives you pretty much a good damage. It gives you a good bit of damage in combos if you actually do get the hit. So in general, you outrange her on the ground and should take advantage of it, but be mindful that she's going to be using the air a lot, so similarly to Chip, you know, don't you don't want to force situations all the time because she does die very quickly, so if she's willing to take risks running into you and gives you free stains or, you know, free abilities to set up, then that's really the end game goal. 5k is a very good round start against her, but she can beat most of your options with S tandem. But if you do a slight micro dash, you can actually punish her for it. Nago. So Nago kills you for pretty much doing anything until he has two vials of blood. 236s is so strong against Testament that basically you want to rely on being as safe as possible until he's at the point where he has too much blood, right? When he's at this point, it enables you to bully him way more with 236S, uh, Arbiter. He cannot really do much against this besides guess right or wait it out. Not only that, Crow is very effective to catch him jumping. Air Arbiter will also catch him jumping. So you can effectively bully him with, you know, Crow, 236S, uh, you know, whatever, over and over again until he gets blood. But then when he gets blood again, you have to be mindful of it. High Arbiter is extremely useful because, like I said, it will catch him jumping and it is also an overhead. But uh, in general, that's really the main thing about it. There is something very important to keep in mind. Round Start 2S will beat almost everything, but it will lose to him doing 6k or high blood options like Fukio, you know, Beyblade. Now, you do not want to fuck with him on Round Start that often because his return is way higher than you at the start. But uh, if you can threaten 2S every so often to make him want to use blood sooner, it will help. But in general, rely on being extremely passive and reacting to Fukio until he's at high enough blood. Zato. So be careful about how you let him summon when up close and try to kill Eddie with 2K. 2K and 2P are both the best options that you can use for it. Uh, and in general, they reach very far and are just good options in general in neutral against Zato. You completely dominate neutral as soon as there's a really good bit of space between you two, between 2 day success over and over again sometimes, Pro and Arbiter. All of these make it really hard for him to kind of just summon Eddie and it'll make him have to start using the air. Uh, if he ends up using the air a lot, he's going to start using flight to bait your 6Ps, which means sometimes you will have to try to air throw him uh, to prevent him from just floating above you to punish you from you know doing it. But uh, also be mindful of the fact that he can amorphous to punish your block strings, punish your crow into block strings. Round star is the most important part. 5k is pretty good and safe versus most of his options, but backing up and trying to whiff punish him to get more space is also very strong. Eno, another matchup usually dictated by round start. Uh, Eno struggles pretty heavily to move around crow or, you know, air or ground uh, 236s, as well as just air 236h in general and Arbiter, of course. Uh, she can prevent, uh, preemptively cover herself with HCL, but if you do nothing, then, or you run under it, then she eats shit. So pretty much she has to be a little careful about how she swings with HCL, but most of the time she's going to be committing to things like, uh, like dive, or she's going to rely on stroke to challenge you in neutral. The key thing is to really avoid scrambling with her. Your goal is to win through stability, and hers is to kind of win through forcing RPS and mixing you up from there. Uh, at round start, Eno 2S will beat everything you have at round start, except if you do nothing. So treat the situation similar to how you would with Nago. Axel. Axel controls the entire pace of the match and effectively beats you in risk reward through how infrequently you get to set up stain. Moves like uh, 5P, uh, 2H, Renson. These are all really good moves to prevent you from ever throwing out 2d6s or a grave in general. And then even if you do get him stained, it's likely that he'll probably get some good poke on you. He's got very good uh, pokes on reaction. Axel's weakness is of course that he doesn't get a bunch of damage off of his pokes, but since it removes testaments again and how hard it is to set up, it's quite dangerous uh, for you to rely on that all the time. 
basically you want to focus on walking him to the corner like letting him you know move backwards until he ends up to the corner and then you have a little more leeway with how you you know go about it uh, one thing to keep in mind is how he plays on the ground. You want to use a lot of Arbiter if he's sticking to only the ground. Whereas if he's using the air, it enables you to be a little more careful or a little more uh, gamble heavy with 226 S. Remember that despite how much he can control with Jump P, Jump S, and Ransom, his damage is ultimately still pretty low without meter, so it's a pretty slow grind and to be very careful about it. Uh, all round starts lose to his far ass or trade at best except for 6p which you know can be a big gamble for a matchup like this so ultimately uh, be very very careful so how uh, boss can control space pretty well but pretty much testament just has more threats around mid-range and much higher turn especially with stain uh Faust can crawl a lot of their buttons but with things like low arbiter it's kind of risky to rely on all the time because if you do you just end up getting hit anyways uh, the goal is to kind of stick to mid-range and bully him with stain uh, usually best from round start uh, 2k does beat most of his options from here or it'll recover fast enough to you know block whatever he does sorry apology man um like that uh jump d can be very useful in this matchup but it is much more of a risk compared to the other mobile characters as of jump H, and so usually sticking to the ground is most ideal. Uh, far S, 2S, and 2K are usually the best options for this matchup. So Potemkin. Potemkin is a really odd matchup. You basically control the pace of the game, but you don't really control neutral. Uh, Potemkin can interrupt a lot of stuff reliably with slide head, but having a succubus on the screen is pretty important for him against him for that reason. Once you have one near him, you can kind of just teleport, punish from there. You cannot throw to the success or crows out for free though, because he can always just flick and reliably stop it and get his turn. Armor is a problem until he's stained, in which then it's a little worse to commit to because of the pop, which sometimes it won't work as I just showed. <laughs> but basically, it is also a risk he has to consider. Most of the match will be pretty much spent playing mid range with him and punishing him for being a little too preemptive with slide head. Uh, remember that due to his lack of movement, having the succubus away from the corner, or to teleport away from the corner, is extremely, extremely powerful and sometimes gives you outs when they commit to deep. Round start, 2k will beat most of his round starts or avoid them. Be careful about over committing at round start due to his Kara Popbuster. Leo. So Leo, you bully him in mid-range, but he basically kills you when he gets up close. And he's very good at setting, uh, stopping you from setting up on him. If he uses Fireball a lot at max range, you can use the first hit of 2 success to nullify the projectile, or uh, even if you do not, it will sometimes still give you the Succubus anyways, uh, which is still very important. If he uses Charge Fireball, you can also just react and use Arbiter. In general, Arbiter and Pressure is very strong, especially at a distance, because it helps avoid his ability to RPS with uh, DP. Try to save as much meter as you can for when he gets in. He will eventually get in, like in some way, whether it's 2D6S, uh, IAD, or 2D6H with meter, or whatever. He will some eventually get in. Your best round sites against him are 2K and 5H. Ram. So Ram doesn't control space as well as Axel, but her return is extremely high and her buttons reach very, very far. In fact, they reach far enough to contest where pretty much most others cannot. Because of that, you can't really be as greedy with your pressure or even how you commit to things in neutral with uh, Crow or to the success because 5H will pretty much blast you if you press it <laughs> if you press it too close to her. So since they have to set up stain and ram pretty much gets it immediately, you have to be very careful about everything. Arbiter is very strong to control space right outside of 5H range, but be very careful about if she just moves forward and presses 5H. Uh, avoid using 2H. 6H is sometimes good for calling out backdashes. Uh, but in general, avoid throwing any projectiles when near the corner. Focus on playing kind of safe mid-screen. And in general, you don't really want to use the air as much. Try to focus on the ground. And these are really the best approaches to challenging her. Instant blocking racket is essential for defending against her. 2S at round start will also trade or beat almost everything. Uh, but it will, it will trade with 2D. 
in her favor. Uh, 5-H will beat 2-D at round start and gives you a big combo, but it does open you up to her other openers that lead to her bigger turn as well. Mix it between the two and doing nothing and with punishing. Anji. So Anji struggles pretty heavily to approach Testament through 2-D success and Crow, meaning in order for him to really get in, he's got to spin into them or into either of them. But if he does that, it lets Testman start their own offense. So you can just kind of wait after you throw projectile, see if he spins. If he doesn't, then throw a crow. If he did, then you can run up, start your own offense. React to seeing what he does. If he just waits, if he spins, if he air dashes, is the majority of the matchup. Uh, Arbiter can be really strong if he's stuck in grave. Uh, 2D success blocks them. But the main thing is really just reacting to what he does at controlling spades. 5H beats almost everything at round start besides Fire S and 2S. The walkback 5H will also beat those two options instead. Giovanna. So Giovanna is basically another matchup based around you just bullying her with Fire S. In fact, 2H is another great option to represent uh, with Fire S because it'll cover a lot of the options that she can represent to beat 6B. Or sorry, Fire S. Uh, most of the game you want to play on the ground because of this. She is much better at disrespecting you than most other characters, and so the goal is to pretty much put stain on her, and then you play footsies with her, and you use your kind of stray hits to continue snowballing from there. Uh, Arbiter is a lot more risky to use against her because of her unique dash. Basically, you will never hit her with this unless she's at full screen. Pretty much in general, you want to stick to using your normals, stick to mid range. Uh, at round start, 5k will beat all of her options except 2d which in turn loses to your other options. Goldless. Round start pretty much dictates the entire match. Uh, Goldless does struggle a ton around Arbiter and Neutral, and he can even really counter poke a lot of your offense due to how his far S is, as, well, as you'll see. Since his movement is so bad, you don't really have to worry about anything besides drone or minigun outside of mid range. Uh, in both cases, if he does either, Arbiter can also cover it, but it also takes rid of his it gets rid of his security level if he gets caught in midway, which means he has to be very careful about he uses it how he uses it, sorry, either as well. Uh, having a succubus in the air to teleport to you when you're near the corner is also very good to make him hesitate on committing on offense, since you can always just start in teleporting to that. Keep stacking stain on him, use crow without succubus if you think that he's gonna jump into it, and just abuse Arbiter in general. After saying all this, I want to clarify, if he gets in on you, he's probably still going to kill you in one or two good guesses, so, you know, be smart about where you choose to gamble against him, and just how he gets close. 6P round start beats almost all of his options except 5H, but his 5H loses to your 5H and gives you a big combo. Jacko. So, for the Jacko matchup, a lot of it is kind of playing mid-range and trying to bully her until she ends up cornered. A lot of the time, Jacko players will end up running away and just kind of summoning minions like this, in which case, if they do that, all you want to do is reliably 6p them every time she kicks them towards you. You can't always kill them with projectiles, so you want to be ready and familiar with using 6p. The key thing about this is you can also cancel the hit animation into uh, a special cancel, which means you get to set up for every time you kill a minion. So making sure killing minions is a key part of this matchup. Otherwise, 5k is pretty much the god. Far S is also the god. 5H as well. She's probably going to use the air a lot, but uh, Jump D isn't always the best option, though if you're near the corner, using Jump D is much, much better. In general, stick to using Far S, 5K, 5H. Those are your best options for this matchup. Uh, Baikin. This matchup is a bit of a tightrope tight around spacing versus H Kabari. Anywhere in the range where you can contest her with Far S or 5H is most ideal, but any further, you want to be very careful about throwing fireballs. Not only that, she does have a lot of good options of contesting after 236S with 2H. 2H will also go under uh, Kroos after, even if you have the Succubus on the screen, similarly to uh, Stun Dipper. So be very careful about that. Pretty much you want to keep this slight distance between you two. The, the range is very, very important and movement is very, more, very much so important in this matchup compared to most others. And in general, just be careful about fighting her in the air. Uh, most of her turn will come from air hits, 
and so it's quite risky to use the air often against her. Uh, Chuas is the most ideal round start against her. It will win or trade or essentially lead to a neutral situation for everyone. Happy Chaos. When you're in mid-range, you do not want to take any risks against this motherfucker. This is another matchup pretty similar to Ram, where you have to be very careful about trying to fight him because most of his return is immediate and yours is not. So trying to control space without stain is very risky. If you do have stain, it's a little better to, to contest the contest him, but for the most part, you have to be very careful mid-screen. Uh, if he's outside of your far S range and he's moving, you can gamble by using Arbiter but it does not always lead to a lot. Usually the most reliable thing is to just walk him to the corner, you know, let him give up space so he ends up to the corner, and then you bully him and kind of get more turn off your counter hits and more off stain, and that is really the end game goal. Do not, under any circumstances, break the wall without super. If you're going to break the wall and you can't super, drop your combo early. That way, when you're at this point, is not as bad. It will, if he resets the neutral, he is going to make it call, especially when it's later into a game. Round start is iffy. Um, Faras and 5k are both good options, but they're high risk and very low return and compared, compared to what he can get. And so it's highly recommended you just don't do anything the majority of the time. Testament. So it's a Splatoon match, basically. You both just throw fireballs at each other, and usually the first person to throw to the success is usually the one that loses. Although sometimes it can clash, as we just saw. Uh, move around a lot to avoid Arbiter if they use it. Using 236, uh, jump 236S or jump 236H is very, very good preemptively if they're close, though it does also leave you open to Arbiter. It's pretty much entirely built around whoever gets seen first and whoever snowballs first. Because of how the character works, you know, one character is getting a lot of, or one person is getting a lot of return and the other is not. Uh, 5k, 2k, 2s, and 5h are your round starts. Bridget. So, just a quick caveat before we even start. Before we even hit the 60 seconds, Bridget is super new, so not all of this, you know, it may change in the future. If so, uh, we'll probably do an update video on it. Probably a more in-depth one, so... Uh, when it comes to Bridget, 1, using far S, 5h are all very good buttons. 5h, especially get round start, is very, very strong. Uh, Against most of Bridget's buttons, 2k is very, very strong because the low profiles it. 2k and 6p especially, and in some moves you can actually whiff punish by low profiling it with uh, 2k. Uh, similarly, if Bridget's using the air a lot for whatever reason, jump to get is very, very good. Uh, it gives you a lot of combos. But basically, a lot of it is you want to hold your ground, 6p, go for uh, 2k's under her buttons, things like that. Options like that are extremely important for the matchup. Basically, when it comes down to is just standing and playing super safe. You don't need to let yourself take any major risks because you will usually control neutral uh, better than her. So keep that in mind. So that's it for me. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you learned something from this. Thanks so much. Also, fake note to my editor. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for all this. <laughs>